Hello, this is Matt with Youngstown Historical Fencing, and today I'd like to give you my thoughts and opinions of the Ronin Katana Euro Model Number no. 3, the two-handed medieval war sword. We're going to start with the boring stuff just to get out of the way. The MSRP of this particular sword is $450. I found it at that same price on Cult of Athena and Amazon, which is where I purchased this specific sword. Ronin Katana's claimed statistics for the sword match very closely with my measurements. They say the blade should be 35.4 inches, and I got 35 and 3 eighths. A total length of 45 inches to my 44 and 3 quarters. Blade width at the cross of 3.2 inches, and I got 3.25. The width of the cross is supposed to be 9.7 inches, and mine is 9 and 3 quarters. The length of the grip itself should be 7.1, and mine is 7 and a quarter, slightly longer. And the total length is almost exactly dead on. They're claimed 9 inches, and I got exactly 9 inches. Interestingly, they do not list a point of balance on their website. My sword has a point of balance of 7 and 3 quarters inches, which is very far out and is noticeable while moving the sword around. The grip is a wood core wrapped in cord and then wrapped in leather. The stitching is rather poor, but the seams at the pommel and the cross are acceptable. The gap is not significant at the pommel and there is almost no gap at the cross. You can see the stitching is very rough. Despite the reasonable quality and the construction of the grip and hilt assembly, I do believe it is the weakest portion of the sword. The grip itself is quite short, and I can't comfortably grip the sword with two hands in anything other than fists. Using a handshake grip with the dominant hand and using my support hand in any way besides gripping the pommel is basically impossible with this length of grip. And I do not have particularly large hands. I wear a small size glove. And this wouldn't be horrible if the pommel was nice and round because this grip isn't significantly shorter than the grip on my Hanwei Rhinelander, which has a nice round pommel and grips easily in the hand. That short grip is perfectly comfortable for me to use in two hands and not have any problem. The pommel is the problem. Though Ronan did do a good job in peening the pommel and smoothing that peen to blending it almost seamlessly where you can barely notice it, that's the only good thing I can say about the pommel. The pommel is sharp in several places. The inner ridge here, the outside of the disc, where the disc meets the grip. It's sharp and digs into your hand. I could not find a comfortable way to hold this pommel. Aesthetically, it does work, and the sword looks quite nice with the wheel pommel hanging on my wall. However, the pommel is also far too small, and I believe it contributes greatly to the sword having such a substantial point of balance. I think it would benefit Ronin to make this same blade with the faceted pear pommel that's on their number 7. It would fix the handling, and it would also make it much more comfortable to hold in two hands. Moving on to the blade itself, I believe it has a nice even grind with very few noticeable ripples. This blade is supposed to be a diamond cross section with a central ridge, but the ridge is fairly washed out. It is visible from the side, but looking down the blade, it can be a challenge to see the actual ridge. The blade itself is incredibly wide. I don't think that the numbers do justice to how broad it is, but it is very imposing in the hand. The cross is symmetrical and reasonably cast with a very small gap. Moving on to the scabbard, it's wood core and is wrapped in what they say is real leather. I'm skeptical of the quality of that leather, but I like this scabbard. I really like how it just has a plain leather throat, no metal or anything shiny at the top. I'm not sure how historical metal throats are on scabbards, but I am not a fan of them personally. I think they're a little 
tacky, and more importantly, they have a tendency of scratching your edge while you draw and sheathe the sword. It does have a metal shape, which is finished in a satin polish, which I quite like compared to the mirror or chrome polish that you find on other makers. The belt that comes with the scabbard seems to be controversial based on other reviews of this sword. Some people seem to think it's absolutely worthless. I don't. I like it. Because it's here. Most swords don't come with a belt, and you have to find some way to suspend them, mount them, and hope that the leather matches, and that it looks right, and that it fits properly. The biggest problem that other people seem to have with this belt is fitment. It doesn't come with any instructions on how to tie the knots or how to assemble it, and the images on the website are not helpful. I spent quite a lot of time trying to tie the knot in such a way that it was tight and even and looks good, but now that I have it all set up, it carries well and draws comfortably while being worn, and it looks quite nice. I'm pretty pleased with this belt, and I don't plan on changing it. Overall, it's a handsome sword that looks good on the wall or being worn at your local Renaissance fair or wherever you want to wear a sword. If you're looking for a sword to look cool on your wall or hip, I think this is a good choice. As far as cutting goes, I used this sword personally for several months before bringing it to our club for a cutting session and loading it out to other students. Its imposing size and good looks made it very popular for everyone to play with. The factory edge came reasonably sharp, but more importantly, it has very good basic edge geometry. I have not done anything to sharpen this sword. But as you can see, with good edge alignment, it glides through loose hanging paper with basically no effort. Using just the weight of the sword and one hand, I was able to make repeated cuts in the paper with no problems at all. I actually really like using this sword in one hand. It's odd, but the way it flows works. Overall, it was very successful at cutting paper, but the poor grip did make more complicated cuts difficult. On a related note, cutting paper like this is a very interesting cutting experience. It's much different than cutting a more solid target like water bottles or tatami mats, but it forces you to have good edge alignment for the entirety of the cut and not just the moment of impact. But it does not require any power generation as long as you have good alignment. But it's also very inexpensive and has very little cleanup. Moving on to some rolled up newspaper. I had a lot of problems generating enough tip speed to smoothly cut these newspapers. Water bottles fared better. But I still wasn't very pleased with its cutting performance in general. Some good sharpening would probably help this blade significantly, as that tends to help with light targets like water bottles. But I did manage to get a few good cuts in. Finally, we'll move on to some tatami mats, where it suffered the same tip speed issues that it had against the newspaper. I do find it disappointing that such a cut-oriented sword has so much trouble cutting targets, but at least it didn't take any damage or anything like that. It did show its flexibility in some of these less successful cuts, and you can clearly see just how much stress was put on the blade during some of these imperfect cuts. So in conclusion, I like this sword as a collector. But as a practitioner, I don't like it at all. It's uncomfortable and it doesn't move very well. I think Ronan was on the edge of greatness with this sword, but they missed it. So it'll just have to look good on my wall instead.